Oh. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our topic and coming together this afternoon where we can discuss on the topic of mental health. We pray for your Holy Spirit's teaching and guidance is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so mental health and how can we maintain good, healthy minds and, and how if it is that you're, you find that you encounter someone or you're personally experiencing, uh, you know, ill health with your mind, you feel troubled, distressed, uh, angry, irritated all the time, what are some of the things that you can do to overcome that and to be cheerful and happy again. So let us have a look. Sickness of the mind prevails everywhere. Nine-tenths of the diseases from which men suffer have their foundation here. So nine-tenths of all of the diseases from which men suffer begins in the mind. And that's very powerful because if you are depressed, we spoke about depression last day, or if something troubles your mind, do you find uh, that you, you may feel down and uh, you would not feel as upbeat, but prolonged periods of that can actually lead to real sick issues and disease. And so, but few realize the power that the mind has over the body. And a great deal of the sickness which afflicts humanity has its origin in the mind and can only be cured by restoring the mind to health. Uh, there was an illustration, a story about two individuals who had gone uh, to have some tests done uh, on themselves. And uh, as they had these medical tests, one of the test results came back saying the person had cancer. The other test results said the person was healthy and well. It turned out that they gave reports to both individuals. The person who was told that uh, he had cancer soon, within a couple of short months, died. And the person who was told that he was 100% healthy uh, continued to live a good life. Uh, later on, um, the facility recognized that the results, uh, the information they gave to the two patients that they had actually swapped, and they sought to call them in to correct it and to tell them where they had made an error. And it turned out that the person who literally had the cancer got the results saying that that person was 100% well, was still alive and doing great, whereas the person who was totally healthy was dead. And so the, the mind had such power over the body that it yielded in one case death and in another life. All need to become acquainted with that most wonderful of all organisms, the human body. They should understand the functions of the various organs and the dependence of one upon another for the healthy action of all. They should study the influence of the mind upon the body and of the body upon the mind and the laws by which they are governed. So it's very important for us to understand the relation between the, the mind and the body and how they can influence each other. The relation that exists between the mind and the body is very intimate. When one is affected, the other sympathizes. The condition of the mind affects the health to a far greater degree than any realize. Many of the diseases from which men suffer are the result of mental depression. 
grief, anxiety, discontent, remorse, guilt, distrust, all tend to break down the life forces and to invite decay and death. And when we uh, actually meet with individuals one-to-one -one and have a consult with them, um, we explore this area as well. So there's a question within the assessment form that talks about are you suffering from any remorse, worry, guilt, fear? And if the person puts yes, then we would seek to hold a discussion with the individual about, you know, that situation and to enlighten them about the close connection between uh, the mind and the body and how these conditions will break down the life forces and invite decay and death. It can cause you to be sick and it could very well be the reason why you are unwell. And as we share that with folks, they're able to make adjustments and to relieve themselves from such worry, guilt, remorse, or fear. And uh, so that is something that is quite real, and we do explore that when we meet with folks to seek to, be, to help to restore them to better health. So depression has only slightly increased in the past 90 years or so, true or false? The answer is false. Which of the following are symptoms of clinical depression? Loss of appetite or, sorry, loss of interest or pleasure, hearing, voices, difficulty, sleeping. Which of these? The answer is A and C, loss of interest or pleasure and difficulty sleeping are symptoms of clinical depression. So depression increases the risk of stroke, as one example. Uh, we want to have a look at tryptophan, uh, which is an essential um, am amino acid uh, that is important for a, a certain kind of hormone, serotonin. Um, serotonin that tends, is a neurotransmitter, and it regulates many functions. Uh, in, such as our mood, the appetite, sensory perception, how you perceive things. And, um, and serotonin uh, is, is also helps with giving us restful sleep. Serotonin keeps you alert during the day. And in the evening, it changes to melatonin. It, and so that uh, melatonin is what will give one restful sleep you find that sunlight enhances serotonin production within the body. So getting out into the sunlight is quite important to help one to maintain good, uh, healthy mind. Uh, if it is that this hormone actually aids with regulating your mood, your appetite, how you perceive things, whether you are feel threatened all the time or you're, you're quite cheerful, uh, so it is important for us to get sunlight as well as looking at our foods that will enhance serotonin within the body. So certain foods such as the black eyed peas, pumpkin, seeds, almond, nuts, avocado, uh, these are high in tryptophan and will enhance serotonin production within the body. So which of the following foods are high in tryptophan? There, these are four foods listed here. Which of them, um, are, they are all high except one. Pumpkin seeds, tofu, broccoli, black-eyed peas. We have broccoli as the exception. Broccoli is not high in tryptophan. Now, all carbohydrates should be avoided in cases of depression, schizophrenia, bipolar, any mental health issues. Should carbohydrates be avoided, true or false? The answer is false. We do need carbohydrate. It is the fuel, the main source of fuel for the brain. And you're talking about mental brain issues. So we do need to feed the brain. And carbohydrates is quite essential. 
However, we would also promote complex carbohydrates, uh, which you can get within your whole grain, brown rice, and other whole grains, uh, or even your ground provision and so forth. Those are complex carbohydrates that would be quite helpful to mental health. So which one of, uh, what is one food that is high in omega-3 that can help depression and other mental issues? Flaxseed. So we also have walnuts, uh, olive oil, um, chia seeds. They are also high in omega-3. Uh, what about two types of exercises that can decrease depression or in uplift your mood. And the two types of exercises are walking and gardening. Walking and gardening. And uh, the gardening, um, it, it, it really helps to take one's mind away from you know, the cares of life and uh, you start focusing on a plant, watching it grow, nurturing, and, and um, doing your daily uh, attention uh, to this plant. And it's quite um, therapeutic. And so you um, see here that pure air, good water, sunshine, and beautiful surroundings, these are the means for restoring the sick to health in natural ways. So not only for mental health issues, but for other health conditions to have beautiful surroundings. So if you are working with someone and they are unwell, as long as they are able to, you assist them in doing things around the home to beautify the garden, the yard area, keeping it clean, simple things like sweeping up the leaves, um, you know, planting flower beds or uh, food crops and uh, weeding them and keep molding and so forth. All of those things are so important. Uh, even just getting the hands within the dirt uh, tends to have uh, a soothing effect uh, on the mind. So gardening is like a master. And then walking helps to improve those endorphins as you walk and you, uh, one is able to have more energy, you have increased blood circulation to get good blood to the brain. And so these are two exercises that can be great. Um, I also want to say that researchers have found that people who lovingly tend to their plants so researchers in Holland have found that people who lovingly tend to their plants have fewer heart attacks, lower blood pressure, and looser muscles. You know, you're not stiff. Uh, you're quite flexible. And a slower heart rate. So tending to plants and, um, you know, the trees and the grass and so forth, it's quite helpful to restore health to the body. So older people who exercise three or four times a week have a decreased risk of Alzheimer's. And children who play vigorously for 30 to 40 minutes a day are better able to organize their schoolwork, do math, and do class projects. So it does help to stimulate the mind when one is engaged in some form of activity an outdoor activity, uh, an exercise, it helps to, to enhance um, and stimulate the mind and body. Exercise also um, causes neurogenesis in the hippocampus. So the hippocampus is a very important part in the brain, and it is the first part of the brain that deteriorates with Alzheimer's and uh, so exercise will help to um, ha recreate those neuron cells within the hippocampus and that's why you find that individuals who have Alzheimer's they naturally want to walk and so as they walk 
they would go walk a distance and then you find like something kicks in their mind and they're able to turn around and find themselves back home because you know the you know the the senses and so forth begin to work uh, as the body as the you know they literally do that walking that exercise that would cause the brain cells to trigger uh, and work properly function well as well as um to regenerate new neurons within the brain. And a study in Loma Linda shows that regular eaters of meat, including poultry and fish, are twice the risk of dementia than vegans. So they are at risk um, twice of getting dementia than vegans. Uh, so it's important to even watch the diet. Diseases that have plaques in the brain improve, involve an accumulation of beta amyloid proteins, uh, which is as in the case of Alzheimer's, and, um, and even uh, Parkinson's disease to some extent. And they are formed through an abnormal process or involve prion proteins, which you would get from eating uh, meat uh, uh, and beef, you know, food from the meat from cattle and so forth, uh, which attach to cells within the brain. So um, these these uh, prion proteins attach themselves within the brain, and they cause plaque. And the plaque can also form as part of an autoimmune process that attacks the body. And instead of um, attacking the foreign substance itself. So you find that curcumin in turmeric will help with deep plaquing the brain. So just on the sidebar here, um, looking at what can cause plaques within the brain, so the meat eating, um, as well as if you have some autoimmune condition, that can be, those plaques can be removed uh, by using curcumin. And you find um, that the, the protein cells within the brain have a certain way in which they have to function, um, in which they have to operate. You have something called protein folding. And if that doesn't happen well, then you have problems. Uh, and so it's very important for us to use the turmeric um, that root or the powder and drink, drink that daily uh, to help with removing plaque from in the brain. So how can water be helpful? Um, you can use water internally and externally. So for external, you, you can have hot and cold contrast baths that tend to stimulate um, the neurochemicals in the brain and help one to feel better. It, internally reduces dehydration because the brain is 80 to 85 percent of water. And if you are dehydrated, then the brain cannot function properly. And you would find that as soon as people start drinking more water, they feel more energetic and they are even happier. You know, it, it's really weird to think that someone is sad and dumb and depressed and feel low because they're dehydrated for a want of water. And a simple thing is water. So make sure you're drinking adequate amounts of water. And so when you're helping anyone with any brain issues, it's important to give the brain water. Keep it hydrated and saturated with water. Studies have shown that most people constantly are partially dehydrated. As a result, their brain is working considerably below its capacity and potential. Signals of dehydration can be any one of the following. You can have heartburn, stomach ache, you know, like someone shared with me, um, you know, earlier. I think I have a chest pain. I said, okay, um, 
are you drinking your water? Are you drinking enough water? I don't, and the person responded, you know, I don't think I have drunk enough for the day. I said, okay, well, then now go home and make up for that. So, um, you know, heart burn, stomach ache, it's a sign of um, dehydration. It could be for some other reasons too, but let's have a look at the water um, aspect. So non-infectious, reoccurring or chronic pain, low back pain, headache, mental irritation and depression. So you see here mental irritation and depression and water retention. You know, if it is that you are dehydrated. So you can show signs of water retention. It all has to do with homeostasis, with the sodium water content within the body. Um, and so you, you find that, um, you know, the body may hold on to water, whatever little it has, and, and so forth. But uh, the it's good to drink, drink water until your urine is pale, yellow to clear. Just keep drinking uh, your mouthfuls at a time. So our thoughts affect which of the following? What do our thoughts affect? Our behavior. Does our thoughts affect our body? Does our thoughts affect our feelings? Which? All of the above. So our thoughts affect our behavior, body, and our feelings. So what is one lifestyle practice that has an effect on our thoughts? It's television watching. We're told that individuals who sit before a television screen and begin watching within two to three minutes, they, their brain becomes so engrossed in, in, and, and sunken into what's going on on that screen that they're almost like in a trance life state. And that's why you can have the kids looking at the TV or even big people too. And you're talking, you're calling them and they would not hear you. It's because they're not present. Their mind is engrossed. It's, it's so absorbed by something, uh, what's going on on the television. And so it, it's uh, television watching, it tends to hypnotize, it's like it has a hypno, hypnotic effect on the brain and it um, actually uh, cause you uh, to allow things, the, the beta waves in which um, that travels through um, in the television watching and what it does to the brain, it bypasses that sense three checkpoints, what I like to call my security points, the frontal lobe uh, that is so important for making decisions and to, um, you know, discern right from wrong and so forth. Television watching actually bypasses that and gets to your subconscious. And that's why uh, you can watch certain things and uh, you can see it once. And if you do see a replay, of a particular show, you know you've seen it already because it's gone straight to your subconscious and lodges there. Uh, not only that for, uh, for watching, but what about the content that's shared within whatever is put forth on the TV screen, on the big screen, movie screen, uh, the content that um, comes out of that gets into your mind, into your subconscious, and it's actually uh, molding you, framing your mind and your thoughts and your thinking and your behaviors. I mean, if you set someone up to be watching a lot of soap operas, soon enough they will see nothing wrong with adultery, with cheating, uh, with, with telling lies, making compromises, uh, with um, blackmailing people, you know, all the themes that these soap operas carry, uh, the person soon, it, it, they become receptive to those kinds and ways of thinking and living and uh, um, because they're interacting with it every day. Where did that come from? It's what they're watching, what you're feeding your mind on. And so that affects our thoughts. It affects 
our decision making, our mind, because we are so absorbed, we are taking it in and it is changing us. By beholding, we really can become changed. So let us be, um, you know, actually choose what you look at. You know, a criteria that we can think of for our television, watching the movies, the, um, the songs we listen to, and so forth. If it is that, look at the content. If it breaks the laws of the Ten Commandments, then you, by beholding and embracing it and sharing that along, you are actually breaking that Ten Commandments. Again, if you sit before something, the brain actually um, carries on all the, the, the feelings, the actions, and everything. Uh, so any act done, it's just as good as if you had done it yourself too because the brain goes through all uh, that processing um, of action and, and, and engaging in the real thing. So um, make, let it be a criteria. If it is against the laws um, uh, of God's commandments, then it, is not, it should be something that we would say, look, that's not something for me to be looking at. And you'd find that you would be weeding out so much of, so many of um, the, the TV schedule shows and so forth. A lot of it today you also have that it's steeped in spiritism, spiritualism, and you know, where you have witchcraft and so forth going, people just disappearing and all those kinds of acts. Uh, and I, that is one way in which to get people to be receptive to those kinds of things telling folks that when you die, you aren't really dead. It's Satan's method of teaching and evangelizing the world. Don't let him evangelize you. So I just thought i will emphasize on that point. We do have a lecture with this in its entirety, but um, it, it's something to take note uh, in terms of how it affects your mind. So that's why we see when we work with individuals, we do um, have a discussion about what are you watching, what are you listening to, and uh, look for that connection between um, what's happening there and the brain. So um, give one, what about the Bible verse that we can use to help us with our thoughts? Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. All right, Psalm 119, 165. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Another one is thou shalt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Another one, Deuteronomy um, 33:25, as thy days, so shall thy strength be. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. And these are various texts: um, Psalm 119, 165, Isaiah 26, verse 3, Deuteronomy 33, verse 25. These are various Bible scriptures that you can share or even read for yourself to bring comfort, to bring hope and to uplift the spirit. Studies show that worry, um, a spiritual, emotional, uh, a spiritual or emotional cause of disease comes from worry. It causes all the symptoms of orally administered steroids, which include muscle wasting, changes in diet, and poor healing worry. So that's pretty deep. Many are in psychiatric hospitals because they suffer from guilt, you know, which is a spiritual emotional cause of disease. Because if you're suffering from guilt, you can go to the Lord to forgive you, you can forgive yourself, and you can go to whomever you have offended and ask for their forgiveness. And the Lord can free you of that guilt. So it's a spiritual emotional cause, guilt, worry. It's spiritual emotional issues going on here. 
and we need to recognize them for what they are and treat with those. So what about a story in the Bible that shows a correlation between disease and spirituality? If you were to read Numbers chapter 12, where Miriam, she spoke against the Lord, anointed manservant Moses. And um, she actually there talked uh, against Moses, you know, mumbling and, and to Aaron saying, why did he have to go choose um, the woman that he had uh, chosen out of the camp? Couldn't he have chosen someone from among us? And she was just bitter. And so you found that here she actually um, was backbiting against God's man servant, and the Lord struck her, struck Miriam with leprosy. And she was a leper, and it didn't matter what um, she may have tried. Uh, you know, if there perchance was some physician among them that could have administered some portion. Uh, to Miriam to help her to be restored or to a leper to help such person be restored. When it came to Miriam, it would not have worked because it was a spiritual violation that brought on her disease. And so Moses actually had to pray to God asking him to lift his hand off and heal Miriam of her condition. And so Miriam's leprosy was cured. Now, all guilt is bad and should be avoided. True or false? The answer is false. Because they, you do need to suffer some measure of guilt if it is that you have done wrong. Uh, and in so doing, you would go ask for forgiveness. And that's what the Lord, Holy Spirit does to us every day. Um, you know, bring to our mind whatever might, might we may need um, to be aware of that where we have offended the Lord. And so we feel guilty for such. We ask for forgiveness and his grace. Now, which of the um, following, so all of the following have a negative effect on the frontal lobe except one. What about reading novels? Does that have a negative effect on the frontal lobe? What about watching entertainment and TV? We've just talked about that. And what about being out in nature? Okay, so except being out in nature, reading novels, TV watching, loud music can affect our frontal lobe. Playing video games as well. You just suck on that uh, screen and, and your hands on those monitors. And so that can affect the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe, which is the seat of the, the mind and the body, where the Holy Spirit communicates to us. Heaven, the God, God communicates to us through our frontal lobe, and it's so important um, as we pay more attention to its, its, its function. So even fic fiction, um, which contains no suggestion of impurity, and which may be intended to teach Excellent principles is harmful. Okay, so I can see you're probably frowning here, saying, what? It's a fiction story with a good moral. So why is it harmful? It encourages the habit of hasty and superficial reading merely for the story. So in this book, Ministry of Healing, page 445, 444, 444, 45, and 46. If you read there, um, you would see they cover some of the, these aspects. But in looking at, say, like classical stories and so forth, um, the novels or these fiction, um, fiction stories, uh, they tend, the reader would read, but not deep reading. Just read a uh, superficial reading merely to get the gist of the story and to move on. And it tends to destroy the power of connection and vigorous thought. It unfits the soul to contemplate the great problems of duty and destiny. And we should rather train the mind to grapple with deep thought. 
And so by reading the Bible on the other hand or some better religious book, it's teaching and, and, um, and causing one to think and connect some dots right there um, that could bring some meaning to the life. That, that would help with transforming the life. But the fiction stories are not meant to bring about these kinds of transformation, and it's very much on the surface, not deep. So by fostering a love for mere amusement, the reading of fiction creates a distaste for life's practical duties, so dealing with real issues. And through its exciting and intoxicating power, it is not infrequently a cause of both mental and physical disease. So many of miserable neglected homes may have a lifelong invalid. Many an inmate of the insane asylum has become such through the habit of novel reading. Quite deep. So uh, the novel reading, you can become so engrossed in it in that you wouldn't even take care of your home, prepare your meals, eat when you should, sleep when you should, because your reading, reading could be a good thing, but then our choice of material need to, to be what God would have us do. So novel reading is not good for mental health. Um, and even reading like love stories, any fiction, fiction stories and so forth, they're not good for mental health. So what about, um, you know, getting some more fresh air to clear the mind? Read properly for getting blood to the brain. Respiration is good for anxiety attacks. Exercise in the open air should be prescribed as a life-giving necessity. And for such exercises, there is nothing better than the cultivation of the soil. Let the patients have flower beds to care for, for work to do in the orchard or vegetable garden. As they are encouraged to leave their rooms and spend time in the open air, cultivating flowers or doing some other light, pleasant work, their attention will be diverted from themselves and their suffering. Ministry of Healing, page 264-265. So if it is that you do have a home for the elderly, you have a home for um, a, like a sanitarium, for example, uh, what you need to do is to have a plot of land. And that's why we should be in the countryside where you would have lots of land. You would have beautiful grounds and surroundings and, and um, benches and on the trees where the inmates of the home can go and sit and, and, and you know, feel the coolness and appreciate outdoor life and nature and spend lots of their time, out, time outdoors. But I also have a place where you designate like um, the portion of land, you know, mark it out nicely and give each person, each patient, their portion and say, this is your block for you to take care of. What would you like to plant? And you, it, it's a part of your program. So every day you have a designated time where you can all go out together to tend the plants. And, um, and you know you have other activities that would carry on. And so as they go out to do that, you find that it would yield life and, and, um, and good to their bones and uplift them. Studies show that children in classrooms with open windows learn better. So nothing about these AC air conditioned classrooms. Uh, exercise in the open air should be given as a life-giving necessity. Um, and so we need to get out in outdoors. Nature is good for the mind. It's what we can call vitamin G, nature. Children get more of vitamin G. And those who get more of vitamin G have lower stress levels, more success in school, and fewer ADHD symptoms, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. It is a condition that robs the children of their ability to focus and pay attention. 
So kids with ADHD are more fidgety and easily distracted. It makes it difficult to stay on a task, either um, listening to the teacher or finishing a chore. They're just not focused. And so the National Institute of Mental Health estimates that 3 to 5% of kids have ADHD, but some experts believe that the figure could be as high as 10. So sleep is very important when working with individuals to improve their mind. And so two hours of sleep before midnight is worth more than four hours of sleep after midnight. Neuroscientists now believe that sleep is not only crucial to brain development, but it is also necessary to help consolidate the effects of waking experience by converting memory into more permanent and or enhanced form. Sleeping problems are almost always involved in mental disorders, including depression, schizophrenia. If people didn't get a good night's sleep, they're more agitated and irritable the following day. And they tell you, I didn't sleep well, and they want to blame the world for it. Um, you know, and they're, they're bitter. So once they get a good night rest, then their mood in, is improved and enhanced. Identify one law of the mind related to mental health. Idleness. Idleness weakens brain power. The reason the youth have so little strength of brain and muscle is because they do so little in the line of useful labor. So they, they're so idle and that weakens the brain power. And you could see it. Uh, idle people doesn't you know, look so serious minded. They're very shallow. You try to tell them something, you have to repeat it numerous times because what you're saying doesn't stick. And, um, and they, they don't move. And you can find that in the book, Mind, Character, and Personality, page 383. So question, once we lose our brain cells, is there nothing we can do to grow new ones? True or false? The answer is false. You can grow new brain cells through the process of neurogenesis, which is a real thing that happens. Your neurons are, are recreated, but exercise and walking will help you to do, to do just that. So don't think that you would sit down and it would happen. You've got to walk. You've got to move around. And that would help the hippocampus to produce more of these brain cells to help you and work for you. So what about two disruptors of the frontal lobe? Again, um, the frontal lobe houses are will and self-control. And we need to guard it from becoming suppressed. And so the TV, loud rock music, novel reading. It is a duty of every person for his own sake and for the sake of humanity to inform himself in regard to the laws of life and conscientiously to obey them. Ministry of Healing, page 128. All should study the influence of the, influence of the mind upon the body and the body upon the mind and the laws by which they are governed. All right, so pay particular attention to that connection between the mind and the body. And, um, and so it's very important that as we understand this and we seek to help others, that even the words we speak to them should be one that is uplifting. You know, you're going to say something to someone let the words be more uplifting rather than to tear down. And even as we share um, information or, or share in conversation, uh, let us choose to be, you know, choose to share that which will build up rather than break down. And even when we share, we're told that we shouldn't um, be, be sharing uh, you know, stories or trying, or, or all the sad, you know, sad kind of, of thoughts and feelings because now you're passing that on to another human being, troubling their mind, causing them to think what you're thinking, 
and uh, bringing their spirit low. So let us rather choose to share, to share uh, you know, that which is more um, joyful and, and help, helpful. Um, there, there is a quotation here um, that someone shared with me from voice, the voice in speech and song. Satan puts into the mind thoughts which the Christian should never utter, and scornful retort, the scornful retort, the bitter, passionate utterance, the cruel, suspicious charge are from him. You know, so if it is that you find that um, you have these kinds of thoughts where you have bitter, passionate uh, thinking, uh, it's not of the Lord but of Satan. How many words are spoken that only that do only harm to those who utter them and to those who hear? So hard words beat upon the heart, awakening to life its worst passions. Those who do evil with their tongues, who sow discord by selfish, jealous words, Grieve the Holy Spirit, for they are working at cross purposes with God. And you can find that in the book, my, um, The Voice in Speech and Song, page 1, 8, paragraph 1. So it is not of Christ um, when we have these, word, these thoughts and, um, you know, the, there are certain words that should never be uttered by Christians uh, because as you do so, they bring harm not only to you, but also to those to whom you share. So let us be mindful and, and exercise more caution as, as we go about our conversations daily. So we just want to look at a couple, um, you know, foods that you can use and uh, lifestyle changes to make and any herbal uh, supplements that we would want to uh, add as we seek to improve our minds and our, our mental health. So, of course, the animal passions within the human body can only be aroused uh, with our thinking, our behavior, but essentially, too, by the foods we eat. So, eliminate all flesh and its byproducts from your diet. So, the meat got to go. Uh, the meat contains arachidonic acid that increases arachidonic acid within our body, and that substance uh, impairs optimal functioning of the brain center for wisdom, for judgment, and foresight. So the meat and flesh food, fish included, chicken, turkey, crab, the lobster, the byproducts, milk, cheese, eggs, butter, and so all of them, they contain arachidonic acid, and so that would just increase it within the body and impair the proper function of our brain that's in essential for wisdom. We want to be wise, don't we? For judgment, to discern right from wrong, and foresight, to be able to see, perceive, you know, have some better sense of perception. Eliminate all fried foods. So no frying, um, no highly processed foods, so get rid of all processed foods and rather prepare food from scratch. You want to have real food. So go to the market and get real food, fruits and vegetables. You are not your seeds and your grains. Eliminate coffee, caffeine, um, any vinegar, chocolate, Chocolate is, has caffeine substance in it, see of your mind to be more exact, and we want to eliminate those things, alter proper brain function. Sugar needs to go, and any refined products needs to go, um, you know, so your fine flour, breads, and so forth, those things need to go. You don't want to have anything white, so no white flour, white sugar, um, you don't want any of those, You except if it is white like cauliflower or potatoes, natural white, good, 
but any refined white items need to go. Uh, we also want to um, look at going on a gluten-free diet, so eliminating wheat, rye, barley, spelt, and any foods that has that within it. Any bit of a food that has um, or a, a flour that has any bit of wheat, rye, barley, spelt. So you're looking at um, kamot, white flour, pasta, bun, tart, bread, sweet bread, bake, roti, you know, the whole work, beer, malt, uh, we want to eliminate those from the diet. Then instead have a fiber rich food uh, within the diet. You want whole grains, whole brown rice, your beans and so forth. You want to increase in that. They're great in carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates that is will give fuel to the brain. You want to increase fresh fruits and vegetables, increase your water intake and your omega-3 fatty acids in your flax seeds, your walnuts, your green leafy vegetables, chia seeds and olives. So flax seed, chia seed, you can use two, two tablespoons of those, crush, you ground them, blend them, grind them down to powder and use two tablespoons daily. Then oats. Um, is another good um, item that you can have in your diet. Uh, oats water, but let it be gluten-free um, oats water. And uh, so you want to also have um, lecithin granules, one to two tablespoons of lecithin granules daily. We want to increase the iron levels within the body because the iron levels, if it is low, will help with would, would cause the brain not to function properly. You, it would also cause your vision not to be great. So make sure that your iron level is good. Um, eat beets, pistachio. If you're not diabetic, blackstrap molasses will be good in increasing your iron. Uh, increase folate. So looking at your chickpeas uh, is great in folate. Uh, any of your other beans. Um, spinach, lettuce, increased magnesium, such as in your pumpkin, pumpkin seeds, almonds, uh, calcium, sesame seed is excellent for calcium. Calcium is related to IQ, improving your IQ, and it's also important to help you to produce melatonin, which would give restful sleep. In our lifestyle, we want to avoid smoking, any tea drinking, and this tea refers to red tea, white tea, uh, black tea, green tea, chai tea, you know, Lipton iced tea, uh, Earl Grey, and, and so forth. Those kinds of teas, avoid them. Don't use them. No drinking of alcohol. Reduce your excess weight. You would feel great um, and, and, you know, your, your body would be lighter and so forth um, if you lose your excess weight. Uh, exercise daily would help to regenerate your blood cells, so make sure you walk at least an hour every day. Uh, as you go out there, you exercise deep breathing. You set your meal times. You want to have structure, routine within your life, so you set meal times, set time for waking, set time for getting up, and time for going to sleep at night. You can make sure you get adequate amount of sunlight daily. So that would be anywhere for darker skin individuals between 45 minutes to an hour and a half every day. And for Caucasian light skin individuals, uh, you can get 10 to 15 minutes of sunlight, direct sunlight exposure every day. It's the direct sun that you need to get in order to yield uh, better health and to uplift your mood and your mind. Uh, if you are not getting enough of that sunlight exposure, then you can supplement with a vitamin D. So see us for, uh, or your healthcare provider for um, the supplement value for vitamin D. Uh, so some herbs that would be great uh, for the mind, uh, catnip, valerian, passion flower, chamomile flower, have a multivitamin and kelp. So 
any of these herbs you can use, any one of them. You don't have to use them all at the same time. We give you options here because you may not have them all uh, readily available. So choose one and you can have um, make a, a, a drink with that uh, by adding hot water to it. So basically, um, you know, if we have the instructions here. If it's the hard part of a plant, uh, you have the roots, the seeds, rhizome, or bark. You boil for 15 minutes and then draw for four hours. Delicate parts of a plant, um, such as leaves, flower buds, stems, or clusters, you bring the water to a boil and then you draw or seep for three hours. If you have a combination, you need to boil the hard part first for 15 minutes and then you add the delicate parts and then you draw and it seeps them together for three to four hours and you drink as you would drink water multiples at a time through the day. Uh, it's very important too that um, you look at your gut health to make sure you have a healthy gut flora building your immune system so you don't have any autoimmune conditions that would cause your mind to be um, depressed or any mental health issues and we find that's why we look at the gluten-free diet and also to build your gut health. So you can do so with the use of a probiotic that which you would need to use um, every day for a, say um, three to six months depending on until you get that improvement. Um, so uh, there's a probiotic that we use. Uh, it's BioCult and then you combine that with digestive enzymes, Trienza, and also you use basin HCL with pepsin, um, and, and you have those three, and you use them before a meal, before you eat um, your meal, and uh, that is gonna help you tremendously. Uh, here are just some life skills to a healthy mind. Uh, I wanna encourage you to think positively. Proverbs chapter 23, um, verse 7, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Have a, so think positive uh, rather than be negative and down all the time. Um, have a spirit of gratitude and praise and just be grateful uh, for what you have. Think, you know, there are others who don't have uh, what you may have and so um, even as the little be grateful, praise the Lord for it, and he's going to bless. Um, because a lot of people can become depressed when they, you know, they, they have long eyes and they're looking at others, not recognizing the blessings that they have. You know, you may have great health otherwise, whereas you're looking at somebody with their worldly possessions, but they have poor health, and they're attending to the doctor's um, office every week. You know, so be grateful. It is not God's purpose that any human being should yield his mind and will to the control of another. So be very careful with going to individuals where they take control of your mind and they put you to sit down and ask you questions and have you go off, uh, you know, and when they click, they, they snap their finger, you wake up. That's controlling the mind. So be God doesn't want us to place ourselves in that position. There are thousands who will recover health of if, the, if he will, and the Lord does not want them to be sick. So we need to uh, will ourselves to be well. Understand God wants us to be healthy and well. God doesn't want you to be sick. God wants you to be healthy. So tell yourself, I am going to be well again and will want it, you know, so that you can have it. Uh, the pleasure of doing good to others imparts a glow to the feelings which flashes through the nerves, quickens the circulation of the blood, and induces mental and physical health. Have you ever, um, you know, the Lord put impressed your mind to be helpful to someone, and immediately you have such a burst of energy, you're excited about what is, um, you know, he's impressed upon your mind, and you just are wearing and daring to go. 
So it, it does lift the mind. Let go of resentment and forget and forgive. Vengeance is mine, I will repeat, saith the Lord. And do not become overwhelmed by tasks and obligations, but see them in their perspective. So see um, the, the tasks in, the, um, in their perspective and don't become overwhelmed. I know some people just imagining um, what they have to do uh, in a particular task could be so much that they just think real low. But rather break it up, you know, in little short, short small achievable tasks and it wouldn't be so daunting on you. Laugh more at life situations. Laugh more at life situations. And um, I also want to interject here um, that, you know, have a friendly, agreeable attitude uh, in, in to, you know, in, you choose to have a friendly, agreeable attitude towards others. It would help to reduce conflict in life and invite support from others instead. So choose to be agreeable. Don't choose to be bitter and resentful, you know, most of the time. And in times of stress, look back and remember pleasant experiences. And uh, let that be motivating to you to say, what, this too shall pass? And let me look at the end and see, you know, the joys at the end of it all. So. Those are just a couple of pointers. And then courage, hope, faith, sympathy, love, promote health and prolong life. A contented mind, a cheerful spirit, is health to the body and strength to the soul. A merry heart, rejoicing heart, to it good like a medicine, Proverbs 17.22. And then in the book, Miniature of Healing, page 241, uh, you know, it comes from part of this chapter, beautiful chapter on mind cure. So look up and read that chapter in the book Ministry of Healing on mind cure. And you'd get a whole lot more that, um, that would be helpful there. In the treatment of the sick, the effect of mental influence should not be overlooked. Rightly used, this influence affords one of the most effective agencies for combating disease. So when you're working with someone um, who is unwell, don't overlook the mental issues. Okay, and that brings us to the end of this particular topic on mental health.